In this video, we're going to learn about dangling pointers in C. We'll learn about what dangling pointers are, why they can be a problem, and how we can prevent them. So the first thing we'll do is include the stdlib.h library that includes the dynamic memory allocation functions malloc and free. Then down here, we'll declare a pointer to an int called ptr. So I'll have here int star ptr. And then we'll call malloc to dynamically allocate space to store one int value. So we'll have is equal to malloc and we'll pass malloc size of int. So malloc is going to allocate space to store one int value. It's going to return the memory address for that space and ptr is going to store that memory address. We could dereference ptr and store five in that space in memory then we could also output the memory address that PTR is storing. So we could have printf and we'll have PTR before colon. And we'll output here the memory address that PTR is storing. So we'll have percent %p to output a pointer followed by a new line with backslash n and we'll output PTR. We could also dereference PTR as well and output the value that's stored there. So we'll have star PTR here before colon and then we'll have percent %d to output an int, followed by a new line with backslash n, and we'll output the value we get when we dereference ptr with star ptr. Then if we save compile and run the program, we'll get that ptr is storing this memory address, and the value stored at that memory address is five. So, so far everything is okay. But when we use dynamically allocated memory, we need to free the memory when we're done working with it, so for example, we should have here free PTR when we're done working with the block of memory that PTR points to. So free is going to give that block of memory back. It's going to make that block of memory available again to be reused for other purposes. So it's very important that we do this. At the same time though, PTR is still going to store the same memory address as before. That's what makes it a dangling pointer. So free does not reset PTR to zero or null or something like that. PTR is going to store the exact same memory address it did before, and we call that a dangling pointer. We could see that. We could output PTR here. We could have printf and we'll have PTR after colon. We'll have percent %p to output a pointer, followed by a new line with backslash n, and we'll output PTR after. And if we save compile and run the program, we can see here PTR stores the same memory address it did before calling free. So this is a dangling pointer. And a dangling pointer can potentially be a big problem because if our program still has that memory address, it could still write to that location in memory. It could potentially corrupt data there that it shouldn't have access to. This can also be a security issue as well. Let's try to write to the location in memory that PTR points to after calling free. So here we'll have star PTR to dereference the pointer and we'll have is equal to 99. Then we'll call printf to output the value that PTR is pointing to. So we'll have star PTR after colon percent %d to output an int value followed by a new line with backslash n and we'll dereference PTR with star PTR. And then if we save compile and run the program, we can see here that after we dereference this pointer, we get 99. So our program was actually able to modify the value stored at this space in memory, even after we called free to free that block of memory. So that's why dangling pointers can be a problem. So one thing people do to prevent the issues that can occur with dangling pointers is to set the pointer variable to null after calling free. So here, after we call free, if we have PTR, is equal to null, what we've done is set PTR to point to nothing because null is a pointer to nothing. So now that block of memory that we freed can't be accessed, at least by this pointer variable because this pointer variable no longer stores that memory address. So now our program is most likely going to crash when we try to dereference the null pointer. So if we save compile and run the program, our program does crash. So even though our program crashes, in an important way, our program has been made safer because our program can no longer access and corrupt memory that our program should not have access to. So in C, 
it's a best practice to set pointer variables to null after calling free with those pointer variables. One advantage of setting pointers to null is that functions will often defensively check if the pointer they're passed as an argument is null before doing important work with the pointer. So for example, we could have a function here called do work. And do work is going to accept a pointer to an int as an argument. And the function is going to return an int value. And the int value is actually going to be a status code. So normally what the function is going to do is increment the value that's pointed to by the pointer by one. So we're going to dereference the pointer to get the value that PTR points to, then we'll increment that value by one, then we'll store that value back into the memory address that PTR points to. Then if everything is okay, the function is going to return zero. But if PTR is equal to null, so if PTR points to nothing, then the function is going to return negative one as an error status. Then down here, we could call do work. We'll comment out this code here and we'll try to call do work after setting PTR to null. We'll have here, if do work PTR doesn't equal zero. So if the function did not return the okay status, then we'll output here error doing work followed by a new line and we're going to return negative one to indicate an error occurred. So if we save compile and run the program, now we'll get here, error doing work. And the idea is that the do work function was able to recognize that something is wrong, that our pointer is null. And the function could recognize that because we set PTR to null. So if we have functions that defensively check pointer parameters to see if they're null, it's again going to be beneficial if we set our pointer variables to null after calling free. Now, instead of manually assigning the null value to the pointer variable each time after calling free, what some developers will do is make a safe free function that handles this for us. So up here, we could make a safe free function. So we'll call the function safe free mem. The function will have a void return type the function will have a pointer to a pointer of type void called PTR as a parameter. So this function is using pass by pointer like do work, but this time we have a pointer to a pointer as a parameter. So PTR is going to store the memory address of a pointer variable and that pointer variable is going to store the memory address of a block of memory that we want to free. So if we dereference PTR, what we're doing is getting access to that pointer variable that stores the memory address of the block of memory that we actually want to free. So we'll call free and pass it the dereferenced pointer to a pointer as an argument. So the pointer to a pointer parameter has type void, so we can free blocks of memory of any type. We're using a pointer to a pointer parameter so we can actually modify the pointer variable that's pointed to by the pointer to a pointer. So if we have star PTR is equal to null, what we're doing is dereferencing the pointer to a pointer to get access to the pointer variable that's being pointed to, and we're setting that pointer variable equal to null. Now, it wouldn't make any sense for PTR to store the value null, and dereferencing null is an undefined behavior. So one thing we could do is have assert and then PTR to make sure that PTR is not set to null. We would then include the assert.h library. So we could have here include assert.h. And we could always turn off that assert with number define and end debug. So now let's try calling our safe free mem function. Down here, instead of calling free and setting PTR to null, we'll now call safe free mem and we'll pass it the memory address of our pointer variable with and PTR. We'll also typecast that to a pointer to a pointer of type void. So we'll have void star star. We'll do this so we don't get a compiler warning. So now if we save compile and run the program, we'll get here error doing work. And that tells us that PTR was set to null because do work is going to return a non-zero value in that case. And our safe free mem function is working. Now we might prefer to call this function the same way we call free, 
by just applying the pointer variable as an argument. So what we could do is use a function like macro to achieve this effect. So up here, we'll define a function like macro. We'll have number defined, and we'll call the macro safe free, and we'll have PTR, and then we'll call safe free mem, and we'll have the typecast with void star star, and then we'll have and PTR to obtain the memory address of the pointer variable. Then down here, we can call safe free. So we'll have, instead of this, just safe free and PTR. And then if we save compile and run the program, it's going to work the same way. So this is the concept of dangling pointers in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.